I give myself away. I'm in love with Jesus on this morning. I give myself away so you can use me. Sing it, church. I give myself away. I give myself away. My God. I give myself away so you can use me. My God. I give myself away. We love you this morning, Lord. We love you with all of our hearts, oh God. I give myself away so you can use me. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. I give myself away. I give myself away. Sing it, church. I give myself away. So you, you know, on this morning, we're talking about the real purpose for your promotion. And we're about to continue on the life of Joseph. This is very important. What I'm teaching you this morning, this is a teaching that God had to use for me to keep my perspective right. There is a reason God is putting favor on your life. And it's not about you. It's not about your own plans at all. It's all about the plan of God. You're about to understand the purpose of God's favor on your life as we dive back into the life of Joseph. Father, I pray over my brothers and sisters that's tuning into this broadcast on this morning. Lord, I pray that you would touch them. I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation would be made manifest on this broadcast on this morning because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the living God. Lord, give us fresh manna from heaven on this morning. Give us our daily bread today. We love you with all of our hearts and we say whatever good happens in our lives, we say to God alone belongs all the glory. Amen. Now I'm about to dive into the word of God on this morning and I have a lot of grounds to cover on this morning and we're continuing on the life of Joseph because the, Joseph's life, there's a lot of similarities between his life and your life, between his life and my life. But ultimately, when you look closely at the life of Joseph, you can see the life of Christ being lived out through this young man. And that's why I love the life of Joseph so much because the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is only about one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word became flesh and dwell among us. Amen. Now let's jump into the word of God and we're talking about the real purpose for your promotion. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 41, verse 14 through 16. Remember we dropped off on yesterday that Joseph, he stood before Pharaoh, but before that happened, the butler had to remember the good that Joseph had done. And God allowed the butler to forget about Joseph because it was not Joseph's set time. But when Joseph's set time came, Pharaoh had a dream and no magicians or warlocks was able to interpret that dream and the butler remembered that it was Joseph God used in the prison to interpret his dream and he spoke highly of Joseph before Pharaoh and now Pharaoh sent that Joseph could come and stand before him to interpret his dream and the story continues and we pick it up in Genesis chapter 41 verse 14 listen to the word of God then Pharaoh sent and call Joseph. And they brought him hastily from out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his clothes and came in unto Pharaoh. You see, when God gives you an opportunity, you have to understand the protocol surrounding that opportunity because it was, a, it was offensive. It was offensive to Egyptians to come around them with a mustache on. Are you listening to me back in this day and time? So Joseph understood the protocol of the people that he was around and he shaved himself 
and change his clothes. Look, you want God to promote you, right? You expect him to get the job on that interview that you are going on? Go get you a nice haircut. Go buy some new clothes. If you don't have new clothes, iron your clothes and put on the best you got and expect God to work for you. Now watch this. Verse 15 says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. You know Pharaoh's dream. You can read about it in Genesis chapter 41 and even 42. And Pharaoh said, There is none that can interpret it, and I have heard of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. You know, when God trusts you with the anointing, people will begin to look to you, but it's a mistake. And if you look to me, we're going to always point you to Jesus because we can't help you. Now listen to what Joseph said. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. Man, I love his example. Joseph said, it is not in me, Pharaoh. Joseph said, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That was an opportunity right there for Joseph to begin to lift himself up before Pharaoh. But the Bible says if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, you don't have to defend yourself. God will exalt you in due season. So because Joseph humbled himself, oh, he was about to get his mind blown. Now, how does Joseph's life relate to the life of Christ? Pharaoh sent after Joseph's time of suffering and brought him out of the dungeon, brought him out of the prison. And whoever Pharaoh sent was almost a type of the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he will also quicken your mortal bodies. So just as Christ was in the grave, he went into hell for me and you. Guess what? On the third day, God sent the Holy Ghost to bring him out. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? God sent the Holy Ghost to brought him out. Are, are you listening to me? And brought him out in the dungeon. Brought him out of the prison. And on the third day, Jesus Christ arose. And he said, all power hey, is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Are you listening to me? So in the life of Joseph right here, the same way God sent and brought Jesus out of the grave, we can see Pharaoh sent and brought Joseph from out of the prison. Now watch this. Genesis 41, we jump down to verse 25 and then verse 28. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. You know, Pharaoh had to dream about the cows and then he had to dream about the corn. He had to dream that the skinny cows ate up the fat ones. Then he dreamed that the, that the withered up corn ate up the good full stalks of corn. And now Joseph is interpreting the dream before Pharaoh and Joseph said, the dream is the same. God is showing Pharaoh what he is about to do. And no magicians can interpret the move of God. Only a real man or woman of God, full of the Holy Ghost, can interpret the things of God. Now watch verse 37. The Bible says in verse, sorry about that, verse 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showed it unto Pharaoh. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed you all of this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. You shall be ruler over my house, and according to your word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. That's what, that's what happened with Christ. The Bible says Christ is now seated at the right hand of God because Christ is willing to humble himself. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Now watch this. So Pharaoh said this, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, 
bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt and at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord but there is a purpose for your promotion let me help you understand this you got to understand this that Judah and the other 10 brothers of Joseph especially Judah because Judah was carrying the seed, the righteous seed. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus was coming through Judah's lineage. And because of the severe famine, God sent Joseph to Egypt, gave him favor, and promoted Joseph so that when the famine hit the land, Joseph would be able to preserve Judah. And when Joseph was sent into Egypt, I feel like preaching a little bit here. You got to understand when Joseph was sent into Egypt, Joseph wasn't sent to Egypt just to have a good time. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not just sent into Egypt so he can get a good, beautiful Gentile wife. I want you to hear me right now. But Joseph's life, it resembles the life of Christ. He was a Jew and married to a Gentile. Jesus is a Jew, but he will marry a Gentile church. One day he's coming again for a church without sport or without wrinkle. But Joseph's real purpose for being promoted was so he could preserve Judah. And in Joseph being promoted and preserving Judah, Joseph preserved the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He preserved the first and the second. My God, my God, Mary and Joseph, they came through the lion of the tribe of Judah. David, he came through Judah. Solomon, he came through Judah. Asa, Jehoshaphat, they all came through Judah. So Joseph mean purpose for going down to Egypt was to preserve the coming of the Messiah, my Savior, my Lord, and my King. And you got to understand this, that God have given you favor to help fulfill his plan. God has not given you favor so that you can get the big head, so that you can be exalted, so that you can think this is about you. It's not about you. It's not about me. The favor on your life is all about Christ and him crucified because Jesus said if I be lifted up from this earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Someone shout yes. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the Holy Ghost. So by Joseph going down to Egypt, he preserved the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you ever forget that. It's never about these characters that we are reading about. It's all about Jesus. Do you realize why God's moving in your life? Do you realize why God put you in that position? Do you realize why God has elevated you to that place? Not just so you can squander it on yourself or your family and your friends. It have everything to do with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the son of the living God. And I want to say to someone listening to this broadcast, all to Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus, now is the time. He loves you. You see, Jesus is coming again. And when he comes, you got to be ready. And no doubt there are some of you under the sound of my voice. You are not right with God. If you were to die this very second and if, if you were to be honest before God, you are not ready to meet your maker. But I believe God has given you a chance right now. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. He loves you with an everlasting love. Without any hesitation, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Jesus, I believe and I confess with my mouth. I give myself away. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. 
that you died on Calvary Cross for my sins. And on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Wash me in your blood. I believe the gospel message. I accept you in my life as Lord and Savior. I receive your forgiveness from this day. You are my Savior and my Redeemer. I surrender all to you. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, me and Pastor Amy want to be the first one to say, Welcome into the family of God. Welcome into God's kingdom. Your sins have been forgiven. The Bible says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The greatest miracle on this side of heaven is when a sinner accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. Someone that was on their way to hell is now on their way to heaven. Someone who was a child of the devil is now a child of God. Someone who was once in bondage to sin is now set free by the power of the living God. My God, we love you guys and we care so much about you. Your name has just been written now in the Lamb's Book of Life. Heaven is throwing a party right now. This is what it's all about. It's all about Jesus, my friend. You know we love you. And if you didn't have a chance to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on that bell or click on the red and white subscribe button. And every time we go live on YouTube, we are live every Thursday night and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are live every Thursday and every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're watching us through Facebook, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. We love to have you a part of our social media family. And remember, pray about it. Become a partner. Don't pray about it, just do it. Become a partner with us in the ministry. Stand with us. Support the work of God that we are doing. We are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ unashamedly. And we make no apologies for preaching the word of the living God. And if I, if I ever say anything wrong, remember, God is always right. I'm only a human that God is working through. Amen. If I say something contrary to the word, remember the word is always right. I'm wrong. Amen. But you know we love you guys and we appreciate you. And we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning. Remember, sow your seeds. Send in your donations. We need it to keep preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we love you guys deeply. Can't wait to be with you again on tomorrow morning. God bless you. Bye-bye.